Hi there everyone and welcome back to the channel. So you join me here back in the dome. Uh, so about a week ago I posted a video around the issues I was seeing with the CGXL and it just refusing to calibrate and refusing to guide and all these sorts of problems. So uh, I decided uh, over the last uh, three or four nights uh, I've been tinkering with the mount, trying to get things back working again and it looks like uh, I've certainly been making some progress. So the mount is now calibrating and it is guiding reasonably well. So I just wanted to give you uh, a quick heads up on what I did. Uh, and by no means this should be taken as the way to do things because this was just pure trial and error. And uh, at least, you know, I am able to now run calibrations. It is connecting normally uh, using PHD2 and not having to use the SD4 cable. And uh, certainly the guiding has significantly improved on where we were um, over the last few months. So here I've got the uh, declination axis uh, cover off at the moment and you know what I did here was exactly what I did on the right ascension as well as both axes were playing up. Um, so the first thing after you know checking all the usual things anything loose and all these sorts of stuff uh, there was nothing obvious wrong with the mount. Uh, so I took the covers off and I, you know, I just uh, slewed the mount around and tried to hear and listen and see and whatever uh, if anything obvious was uh, going on. Uh, was there anything caught up in any of the worm gear and all these sorts of stuff so everything was looking okay. So what I did next was I powered down the mount and you know I was just checking belt tensions and that and I took a hold of the belt and just very gently you know rocked it back and forth up and down and I could hear the worm drive clicking back and forth as, as I moved uh, the, uh, the belt just a fraction up and down. So clearly that was uh, a bit of backlash or a significant bit of backlash sitting uh, in the worm drive. So after tweaking um, we, we, we managed to get rid of the click. So what I did um, was I loosened off the smaller Allen key uh, which I believe is the, um, the mesh tension and then the larger Allen key is the mesh uh, uh, spacing or the, whatever you want to call it, the, the, the meshing of the worm into the, the, the drive. Uh, so I, I loosened off the smaller one, the tension, and I just slowly moved the larger Allen key back and forth until I could find a point. Um, you know, I went one direction, tried it, came back the other direction, keeping a note of how much I was moving until I found that the clicking stopped and it was literally just stopped and no more. Um, and then I adjusted the, the smaller Allen key again uh, just to put the tension back on, onto the mesh uh, itself. And now when I, I rock the, uh, the belt there is no clicking noise and I repeated the same process on the uh, right ascension uh, worm drive. So everything was looking good there, the clicking stopped. I ran a couple of calibrations on the mount and it immediately, you know, it started to calibrate and do what it should be doing. Uh, some of the backlash was still there. Uh, the number of steps to clear backlash was still, you know, higher than I would expect. You know, at some points it was, you know, going over 50, 60, 70 steps to clear backlash. So at this point, you know, I just nudged uh, the larger uh, hex key again, uh, just to put a little bit more bite into the teeth. Ran a calibration. And sure enough, you know, these little minute changes were enough to uh, bring everything back into check again. So, you know, at that point, you know, I didn't want to start messing around because sure as shit, I'd make it completely worse than it was uh, when I found that bite point. So it was a bit of a, a trial and error there. So as I say, I repeated it on both the axes, doing the calibration each time. And then uh, once, you know, it appeared to be calibrating and there was no significant backlash issues, um, then I started to fine tune uh, PHD2, tweaking the aggressiveness, running the guiding assistant and just watching and, and what it was reporting back. And a couple of times I made a, a couple of tiny little movements, uh, predominantly on the, the larger hex key, and then ran the calibrations again, ran the guiding assistant, and uh, everything appears to be doing you know, more or less uh, what it should be doing. So I've run a couple of sessions uh, when we've had a clear night and uh, we'll take a look at the computer and just see what the last uh, guiding uh, graphs look like. 
Uh, but certainly the fact that things are guiding now is a step in the right direction. So yeah, I might need to come back and do some fine tuning, but at the moment it's, it's guiding, the numbers look reasonable, you know, seeing conditions can be affecting things, so I don't want to try and overcorrect for when there's maybe been a bad night uh, of seeing conditions. All right, so as I say, let's pop over at the computer and uh, we'll take a look at the numbers. All right, so here we are at the computer and I've got the PhD guide log viewer open and I've got the guide logs from the various nights. Uh, so this first guide log is from the night of the 9th of January. Uh, so this was the lead up to the, the video that I posted on the 10th when I said enough's enough. I just can't work out what was going on. So here we are in the guide log and you can see uh, straight away when I kicked off this guiding session um, that the RMS total error was 10.26 arc seconds and then I tried a couple of things probably, I can't remember exactly what I was doing here but um, you know I've made some adjustments to some of the tuning in PHD2 uh, but the total error was still 5.42 arc seconds uh, again, uh, another guide run, uh, error was at 4.32, again I've been tweaking the, uh, the PhD tuning, and, but you can see the guiding's absolutely all over the place. So this is when I then started to do some more calibration runs, and you can see with each calibration run, you know, it was failing on every occasion, and uh, you know, you can only see the right ascension axis there, but it's it's all over the place with each of the guide step, uh, the calibration steps, and you know, it just really wasn't going very well at all. Uh, even there, I did a run, uh, it's a guide run, I just let it run, obviously, for after whatever I've been doing, and uh, the two minute run, and it was 2.49 arc seconds. Did some more calibration runs, it failed, you know, I didn't even get through the right ascension and eventually it did do a calibration, so there's the right ascension going up the way and the deck going down the way and then another calibration run and you can see, you know, how much variation there is on the red declination axis uh, with each of the guide steps, uh, sorry, the calibration steps and then I let it run uh, for a couple of uh, guiding uh, sessions. So this first session was two hours, two and a half hours. Again, I started it off doing a lot of tweaking on the PHD2 settings, just trying to see, you know, is there any indications of what the hell was going on with the mount? And, you know, I, I really wasn't getting uh, very far with it. Although, as you can see, the total error uh, RMS was 1.22 arc seconds, which, you know, is probably the best it had been for... Uh, a few months. Uh, so after leaving that running, uh, the next guide uh, session, I think this may be after the Meridian flip, um, you know, we had a total error of 1.31, which again is probably not too bad for the, uh, you know, what I've been seeing over the last few months. So after that, uh, that's when I decided, you know, enough was enough and I started to dig into the mount. And if I pull up the log for the next uh, log I did was on the 17th of January. And here we can see the right ascension, uh, you know, again, sorry, the declination, the red line, the calibration steps, you know, they're, they're all over the place. And uh, that was a guide, just a short guide just to see if anything had changed. And then the next calibration, you know, here we are with the uh, right ascension and declination almost 180 degrees and the declination significantly noisy with the guide steps, uh, calibration steps. Again, I repeated the calibration. No idea what I've been tweaking this, by this time. And we can see on the declination, you know, we've got the guide steps, uh, calibration steps, sorry, you know, all over the shop running up and down. Uh, although the, way, the right ascension appears to be not too bad. So running off a couple of uh, calibra uh, guiding runs, so this was just a short two minute one, uh, we're getting 2.58 arc seconds, uh, another one is 3.42 arc seconds, and then another one, 1.16 arc seconds, uh, which wasn't too bad, relatively speaking. So running another calibration, we can still see this declination backlash uh, appears to be causing 
problems. You know, got some of the guide pulse uh, calibration pulses heading up here, and another one a couple down here, and the, the general line isn't too uh, smooth. Running the calibration, uh, sorry, the guiding again. Uh, this was a 5.34 arc seconds, then a 2.7, and I don't know what happened at the end here, but you know, it looks like a star loss, so whether it was a cloud coming through or what, I don't know. And then again, it was just some more calibration, uh, guiding runs, semi decent one at 1.11, and then a 1.32. Again, a few more calibrations attempted. And we can see, you know, the declination is significantly bad. Yeah, and I think that was the core of a lot of the problems was the declination axis. And again, we can see here in this calibration, huge cluster of uh, steps up here and the next cluster uh, down here. So anyway, after uh, persevering and keep tweaking away, you know, with really poor guiding, uh, sorry, calibrations, you know, the guiding just didn't appear to be getting any better. Uh, you know, here's a 2.2, .2, uh, 1.6, 1 1.34, and I think that was the end of, of that night. So then I moved on to the 18th, and this is when I started to do a bit more uh, tweaking on the mount itself, uh, rather than just within uh, PHD2. And, uh, you know, we started off the evening with a calibration uh, guiding of 1.1 arc seconds, which wasn't too bad. And then it drifted off here. You can see, I don't know where it went, but uh, yeah, uh, I don't know what I was doing, but it went away up to 3.56 and then a 1.09, which wasn't looking too bad. Uh, again, just tweaking some of the PHD2 settings, just trying to, uh, to pull that in. And then the, guy, the calibrations again, I ran some more calibrations and we can see yeah, there's still this continuous problem with the declination axis. And we can see you know, how wrong it looks basically. So then, you know, persevering, started to see things sort of come in check here. We can see I've increased the uh, calibration steps just to try and see if that would help overcome some of those backlash issues. And uh, I'd obviously been uh, continuing to tweak uh, at this point on the mount. And then running uh, a short uh, guiding, uh, came in at 3.38 total error, arc seconds. And then a 1.47, another calibration run, declinations are way off down here. And then another uh, failed uh, guiding session uh, at 4.87 arc seconds. So then on the final night of tweaking, uh, the 19th of January, so it's that two nights ago, uh, you know, I spent quite a bit of time, again, just trying to persevere with this mount and guiding calibrations started to come in. I've still got a large uh, calibration step size at this point, but, you know, things were starting to clean up on the declination and just a couple of short guide tests there and where's the next i've been tweaking here obviously and running guiding just to see what it was doing 1.51 1.21 1.48 and then we started to see some improvements here so this was a 19 minute session at 1.03 arc seconds so things were certainly an improvement 0 0.76, 0.7, uh, 0.67, these are just very short ones. So at this point I decided, right, I'm going to leave it to run for the evening and see what it does. And so the next guiding session was 5 hours, uh, 35 minutes, and we can see we've got a total error of 0 0.99. And you can see as well with this occasion, you know, after each dither, I think I was dithering, dithering every third frame. Uh, we actually got settling complete, uh, which I hadn't been seeing uh, with previous sessions. You know, it was just always settling failed, settling failed, settling failed, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but now after every dither, we were getting settling complete. So the mount appeared to be behaving itself. And the for that, I think that's a pre-meridian flip guiding session of five hours, 35 minutes. The total error was 0.99 arc seconds. So certainly, 
the best they'd seen the mount for absolutely months. And then the post meridian flip, yeah, obviously it kicked off its guiding again. And apart from this period at uh, 10 to 5 in the morning, so I don't know whether we were into bushes or cloud or whatever, it took a bit of a wonder, but it recovered. And um, the total error was 0.97 arc seconds. So, you know, I certainly think that uh, changes that uh, I've made to the mount and adjusting those two uh, screws uh, on the worm drives on both the RA and DEC have uh, made some significant improvement. So I guess it's, uh, you know, we'll just continue to monitor it over, uh, you know, forthcoming guide sessions, maybe tweak some of the settings within PHD2 itself. Uh, I know I increased the aggressiveness on uh, the right ascension, I think it was, and that helped pull things in a little bit. Uh, and obviously running guiding assistant and, and setting the min moves and things like that as it recommended. And uh, yeah, we'll just have to wait and see how it goes. But uh, at least I've got a mount that uh, does appear to be playing or behaving itself again. So uh, we'll see how things go. So that was just a quick update on what I've been up to with the, the CGXL. And uh, we'll catch you uh, hopefully in the near future with some further updates or imaging sessions. So, take care of yourselves, clear skies everyone, thanks for watching and uh, we'll catch you in the future.